episode two of mesmerizing messaging. Um, apologies for the late start. The postie was knocking on the door at one minute to midday. So here I am. And this week, what I'm wanting to talk with you about is what stops us being mesmerizing with our messaging. And two of the main culprits that I have witnessed, and they're very much connected, are fear and judgment. And you might have seen a post I shared yesterday around how on, on a bodily level, in my nervous system, I really understand the fear of showing up. In fact, the first time I ever did a Facebook Live, it took me 20 minutes, completely frozen, right? 100% in the fear response, sat there with my finger, hover frozen in the air, hovering above the go live button. 20 minutes in, in absolute, like abject terror of, of going live on Facebook. And now, five years later, you know, on we go, da da da, type the title, click go live, here I am. And so hopefully if you're still in the place where the idea even of showing up and doing a Facebook Live is terrifying or terror inducing in your nervous system, then that's a little bit of hope for you that it will not always be that way and doesn't need to be and might even become, as my business manager Lauren was saying in our team meeting on Monday, fun. She now loves it and finds it fun, as do I. Like, what an amazing tool to be able to literally hit a button and come live into your world. Um, you know, when I was growing up as a teenager, there was this thing about the 15 minutes of fame that everyone gets, right? And, well, we're well past those days. We can have as many minutes of fame as we choose, as long as we have the courage to be seen. And that's what it comes down to, right? Is having the courage to let ourselves be seen. And courage wouldn't be required if there was no fear. And through the five years of doing this work, I have come to know it wasn't just me who was scared. If you're scared, it's not just you. Every single person I've ever worked with has their own version of fear, of, of showing up, of being seen, of being found lacking in some way, of being judged as too much, too sensitive, too emotional, uh, arrogant, and full of themselves. Um, you know, looking like they want to be a, a, like the savior complex, right? It's just everyone, everyone has their unique fear. And it's not so unique, right? It's very universal, very much shared. And I remember the very first time I um, created a video. So this was pre-Facebook Live days. Created a video and put it out on, on Facebook as an ad, right? As a paid for ad. And at the time I was living in this cottage in the middle of the moors on Dartmoor. And I saw that someone had commented on, on this video. But of course, the internet in that cold, not cold, old cottage took that moment, chose that moment to, to freeze. Maybe it was picking up on my fear, right? my fear response. <laughs> and the internet froze. And I got that whirring circle of doom. And I was sat there and with the vivid imagination that I have, right, that's I recommend if you have one, you, you know, put to good use in terms of telling mesmerizing stories. In this moment, I did not put it to good use. Um, I was telling myself all sorts of stories about what this person might be saying. And suddenly there it was, this comment. I'm sure you're full of good intentions, but you come across as a bit weird. And 
Now, as you can see, I mean, that comment, it makes me smile, right? It makes me laugh. Like, okay, okay. Um, I have fully embraced my weirdness. And in fact, a friend of mine, when I shared this story with her, kind of as it was happening at the time, she showed me this book by Michael Mead called Fate and Destiny. And she had stuck a little bright yellow sticky post-it in this passage that talked about being weird and how weird means becoming more of who we are. It means becoming our destiny. So I thank that stranger on the internet for that nudge into becoming more of who I really am and letting that self be seen. However, in the moment where it happened, that was not my immediate response. My immediate response was to hide. I quite literally got back in bed. Got back in bed under the covers, <laughs> pulled my duvet up over my face with my phone, with the offending message on, still in my hand, outside of the covers. Right? My arm outreached. This message was not welcome in the safe space of my bed. And in that moment, by myself in this cottage, I had a conversation with myself. And there was one voice, and it was loud, and it was mean. It had that sharp edge to it that maybe you're familiar with. It said, see, see, it's not safe. It's not safe to show up and reveal who you really are and talk about your hopes and dreams and how you'd like things to be different in the world. That's how you get judged. It's not safe. Get back down. Stop trying to do this thing where you're making money from your magic or whatever you're calling it. Go and get a normal job where you can just fit in, toe the line and keep your head down. It's not safe. I wonder if that voice sounds familiar to you in moments, perhaps. And luckily there was another voice. At that time in my life, much quieter, but luckily just about audible. And she said, this is exactly why you need to keep going. Because we've been taught to look left and right, judge others, compare ourselves with them, compete, we haven't been taught to see another shining and celebrate her and lift her up and see her success in this world as our own. We haven't been taught to do that. And that's a huge part of the storyline that you're here to change. Get up. And I got up. And I kept going. And that was not the last time I felt fear. Fear has been a, an on and off lover for the past five, six years, in and out. And I have learned not to override her because that would simply send my sensitive nervous system into, into shock, back into freeze but to work with her. And that's what I'd love to encourage you to do because becoming mesmerizing in your messaging requires courage. It requires daring to let yourself be seen. There is only a certain level of mesmerizing and magnetic that you can get and that therefore your work can get which you need to be drawing attention to right in order to be gaining clients and money and having the impact you want to be making on the world there is only so much of that 
attractive force that you can create with strategy and tactics. Are they important? Of course, right? Our magic needs um, a channel to go down. Are they the be all and end all? No, because without truth, which is the most mesmerizing force of all, then they lack fullness, right? They lack magic, they lack that potency that your truth brings to them. And more and more people are craving intimacy, craving realness. So many of us are either by ourselves, right? I live by myself, I've pretty much been alone now for nearly a year. And others of you have been with the same people for almost a year. And that's intense, right? They're both intense situations in their different ways. And right now, especially, we have um, as a source of potential connection, this online sphere. However, if we show up with our masks on and our got it all sorted and our um, kind of game face, people don't get to feel that connection. They don't get to feel your heart. But when you show up in the truth of who you really are, connected, tuned in, then they get to feel you. And that's powerful, that's magnetic, that's what has people want to be a part of what you're up to. Mesmerizing messaging is much bigger than how you introduce yourself at a networking event, right? It's not like, it's not how you craft an elevator pitch. It might find its way in to how you introduce yourself when you meet new people, but it's much bigger than that. It's about how to take your business beyond transactional business into transformational business, like beyond business. And if you didn't hear last week's mesmerizing messaging, I'd suggest going back and watching that one so you can hear my distinctions between a transactional business and a transformational one. And if you want to be creating a transformational one, it requires you living your message and showing up and being seen for who you really are. And that requires learning how to befriend your fear. So I'm gonna go into how to do that in just a minute, but I'd love, first of all, to have a little look at some of your lovely comments. So, hi Emily, hopefully your email connection has settled down a little bit, maybe it was getting a little bit of the fear response like mine was those years ago back in Dartmoor. Um, absolutely Carol, you do have to love those vivid imaginations and put them to good use. Good use and get super um, disciplined on yourself for the times when you're not putting them to good use and halt, right? When you find yourself going down in a storyline that is not supportive, not kind, not loving, stop it, right? Pull it back in, tell yourself a different story. I don't know if you've heard the story of the Cherokee grandfather and his grandson, but similar to me when I was lying in bed and having that very vivid conversation with myself, the grandfather talks about how there are two walls in, in, in everyone's heads, inside everyone's minds. And there's the mean wolf, right? That will gnarl and snarl and tell you how rubbish you are. And there's the kind wolf, the loving wolf who, who will say, hey, you did a good job today. Yeah, you, you dealt with that scenario really well. I'm really proud of you. Well done. And the little boy is transfixed. And he's like, but grandfather, there's two wolves. There's two wolves in my head. 
right? And what, they're, they're fighting? But which one wins? And the grandfather says, one you feed. The one you feed. So make sure with those vivid imaginations that are a trait of being highly sensitive, that you're feeding the good wolf. You're feeding the loving voice. You're feeding yourself with nourishing storylines and nourishing beliefs and not allowing the negative ones to play out. Nicola Hala can totally relate sitting on the precipice of being seen, but holding back as certain people will think I'm weird. They will, they will. And that's what they might, actually. I'm gonna change that. They might. How do we know? We don't know. They might think you're weird. They might be secretly in awe of your level of freedom of self-expression and joy, right? And then that might show up negatively. They might be jealous. And the jealousy might come out as an attack. Right? We don't know. But it's up to you to decide, am I going to let the imaginary opinion of other people impact me living my life purpose and the joy that that brings? Ultimately, it comes down to that choice. Sarah Ann's, I got a blah, blah, blah to my first video introduction on my Facebook page. I feel you. That's really interesting what someone literally commented, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I feel sorry for that person, right? I'm not sure what kind of mindset you have to have to think it's okay to comment blah, blah, blah on someone else's brave self-expression. Um... I thought that maybe that was the reality of your ads. It attracts more than your solar line clients. I haven't done any ads ever since, as I'm not sure anymore it's beneficial. What do you think? That's a really, really good question. Um, and in some ways, actually, it comes down to your design. Um, in t I don't know if you've heard of human design, but there are those of us who are designed to broadcast to strangers, um, and that's part of our purpose. Um, a part of your purpose and are designed to rock the boat and stir the pot and then um, and and therefore learning how to how to live with that how to let that be okay as a part of your your soul journey and then those of us who actually are not designed to broadcast to strangers um, in my human design I'm not I'm designed to create a community which is what I'm doing here spend a lot of time by myself, which is what I do, and then bring my insights, bring the um, the unique perception that that level of alone time has given me to the community. So for me, um, no, I don't do Facebook ads. If I was to, um, I probably wouldn't be as like 100% um, I don't want to say true because I would be true, but I might not be as like I have no notes. This is my this is my note. Fear. <laughs> That's my note <laughs> for today's life. Um, so I would be a bit more crafty, right? I would deliberately craft something that said exactly what I wanted to, to say. Um. And so I can't answer the question, is it beneficial? Because it depends on you and it depends on your human design. Um, if you don't know your human design, you can go to genekeys.com and put your birth data in there and get it. Um, and a group that I recommend if you want to learn more about it is um, Beth Davis's group, Facebook group called Align to Your Design. Okay, I love that you're resonating with the words, Emily. It's um, be great to hear what specifically you're 
resonating with that's always really interesting <laughs> and your internet connection has settled down fantastic so if you haven't said hello yet please say hello I love knowing who is here with me um, and I can't see who you are until you reveal yourself so please say hello and let me know what you're finding interesting and if you have any questions so fear one of the ways i deal with this is actually in a very um practical almost it's a actually it's a mental way of dealing with it and yes you know fear lives in your system and I'll talk about ways to, to soothe the fear. But I do find on a, on a mental level, something that helps shift where I'm putting my attention, right? What stories I'm allowing to run, what stories I'm not allowing to run, is looking at it this way. So a wonderful client of mine, Sarah, and this is um, shared with permission, it's actually in my, my free guide to moving through the fear of putting your head above the parapet, which you can get if you go to my website, so www.katewolf.global slash move dash through dash fear. And, and you'll get this guide. And one of the stories in there, in this guide to moving through fear, is, is about Sarah and her boys. Beautiful mama amazing two boys and she was talking about wanting to teach her boys about being in touch with their emotions and and their sensory um, abilities right their ability to to feel energy and to trust their intuition and she was scared she was scared that if she taught her young boys to live in this way, that they might be um, more at risk at school of, of being bullied. So she had this choice to make. Do I live in alignment with my belief system, with what I know to be true and important, or do I not do that because of other people's ways of living and being and the risk that that might put my boys at, which is back to that decision, right? That we always have to make. And yes, even more tricky when there are children involved, but it's that decision. Do I live in integrity with myself or do I allow other people's opinions to impact my life and me living it full out, right? On this one wild ride that we get in this body, um, in this in this lifetime, do, do I let the fear of what other people might think to stop me living that full out? And so we, we went into it. And what happened for Sarah is that her why not, right, her fear of other people's responses um, to her boys shifted into her why. Her why not became her why because she wants to live in a world where everyone honors their emotional landscape and everyone is in touch with their intuition. And she knows if she holds back from passing those messages on to her boys, she's not living out her purpose, right? And if she does, then she is. And those boys grow up to become emotionally mature, tuned in men who get to behave in that way with their partners, who if they have children, get to bring them up as emotionally tuned in, um, healthily attached young people, right? And that's generation after generation with the right teaching, the right parenting, the right passing on of messaging, how our world changes. So she made the decision that day that for her, her why not, like, oh, I can't because that's not what the world currently 
um, values and respects becomes her why. I want to live in a world where that's what we value and respect. Therefore, this is my action. This is what I choose. And for me, that really helps is taking it bigger, taking it outside of the conversation of you and this one other person or you and this group of people or you and an imaginary crowd heckling you <laughs> um, into much bigger territory of well, what do you want to be a stand for in this world? What, how do you want people to be treating each other in this world? And if it's different to how we're currently living, are you willing to play your part in that? Knowing that, yeah, you might get kicked back, you might get judged, you might get people calling you weird, but maybe that's exactly what needs to happen for the value system of our world to shift. And here's the thing, the more of us that do that, the less weird it becomes, right? The more of us that dare to live with our heart on our sleeve, speak our truth, um, show up <laughs> with no notes and l allow what wants to come through to come through, trusting that that's exactly what people need to hear as opposed to, oh my goodness, how do I get it right? How do I make sure I'm landing my point? Right? Trusting. Then that becomes more and more normal that becomes more and more accepted. That becomes the way things are. Things are only the way they are because we allow them to continue that way. And we get to choose. So yes, that is looking at it from a very mental perspective, um, very mindset approach. And normally I take a much more embodied holistic, energetic approach to things. But when it comes to this piece of it, for me that is and continues to be the most powerful way to look at it. To look at it because our bodies are going to feel fear. They, they simply are. Right? And there are, and there are ways that we can be with the fear. But in to even want to, to befriend the fear, to move through the fear, to what's on the other side, which is showing up, which is the thing that's scary, right? We first have to connect to the desire to want to do that. And for me and most of my clients, the desire is around wanting to see a value shift in our world and wanting our work to play its part in creating that value shift wanting our work in the world to be us living in alignment. That's all I've ever wanted. It's all I've ever wanted is to get to do my work, right? So, um, you know, now getting to do it and having all the wonderful side effects of, of healthy income is such a beautiful um, side effect, right? But it, for me, it had to be that way that way around. So I'm going to come back and have another look at the comments. Oh, thanks for sharing the, the Gene Keys link, Lauren. That is very helpful. And <laughs> Emily says, everything resonates. Um, having the fear and holding the fear and knowing that it's bringing something that moves me forward. Yes. Exactly, because here's the thing. When I think about, I don't know, jumping out of a plane or um, what's other, what's some other things like crazy people do? Um, let's just go with that one for now. I don't feel fear in my system. I just don't want to do it. Nothing in me wants to do that, right? But when I think about speaking on stage to thousands instead of hundreds, when I think about um, 
no, again, let's just go with that, with that example for now. I do feel scared because I want it. Okay, so something in my system goes, oh, oh no, oh, she's growing, oh no, uh oh, where's she going? No, stop her, have, have her, have her decide that that feels really scary and then she's not going to want to do it, right? It's very sneaky, it's very clever. So when you feel that fear, oh, celebrate, because you're onto something. Yeah, so many of us spend so much time like, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to do? It's probably the thing you're most afraid of doing. It's a neon flashing signpost towards your purpose. And so pay attention to it, look to where it's pointing, who is it asking you to become, what is it asking of you to step into, and then the rest of it can be really simple, right? It, it quite literally requires, you know, some kind of soothing motion, like hands on your heart, or squeezing, giving yourself a little hug so you get to, you know, feel feel the physical edges of you in your body, right, so you don't kind of pop, pop off, which a lot of us can do, we can disassociate um, in those moments, so making sure you're, you're in your body, right, so via some kind of physical contact, feeling your feet on the floor, and then tuning in to that fear, which underneath that fear is, is your little one, right? Your little girl or little boy. And say, hey, hey, I hear you. It's okay, I'm not gonna do anything um, terrifying, you know, until you're ready. Right? Let her know you're in partnership with her and you're listening and you've got her and then ask what she needs. What do you need? What do you need to feel safe enough for me to go and speak on this stage to 10,000 people? What do you need? She might be like, well, I just wanna be um, stomping in the puddles. Okay. And she can, cause she's what, five? And that's her job, is stomping in puddles. Yeah, so you can see, feel, imagine her jumping in puddles in bright pink polka dot wellies or snuggled up in bed reading a book by torchlight or nuzzled into the roots of a tree and the roots are just shaped just right to hold her and she just gets to feel really held and safe by this beautiful oak so that you, the adult you, gets to show up in your fullness, shining bright. So there are two ways to, to be with your fear, not override it, not push through it, not punch it in the face, um, but be with it, because it's just a part of you. Yeah, it's just a part that needs some attention and like a, like a child kind of tugging on your sleeve, like come on, right? Wanting attention is only going to get louder until you actually turn towards it and say, hey, what do you need? What do you need to feel safe enough so I can go and show up and do my work in the world? Right? So listen to the fear, pay attention because it's a big flashing neon sign towards your purpose. Ask yourself who it's asking you to become bolder, more daring, brighter, less apologetic, right? Who is this dream that you're terrified of asking you to become? And then tune in, listen to your fear, listen to your little one, She's a little bit scared that you're going to be doing something new and different. 
she's not sure where that's going to lead and ask her what she needs to feel safe enough okay so I'd love to let you, I'd love you to share with me if you go through that practice and how your little one responds what she tells you she needs does she want to jump in the puddles or curl up under the bed um, under the blanket with a book and what is your fear pointing you towards and I'm going to finish with just a little piece about judgment so our fears are often about other people's judgments right that they're going to judge us now here's the thing are any of us judgment free I doubt it so as an additional practice if you are on the journey of wanting to feel a new level of inner freedom in terms of showing up as who you really are then alongside the fear practice I would bring in um, a judgment practice so start noticing what and who you are judging okay and what are you judging them for do you, when you see people um, celebrating their successes do you judge them right when you see someone um, um, like and I'm thinking this particularly in this vein so in the, in the vein of um, judging people as arrogant too much full of themselves um, self-obsessed that that kind of like imagine a bucket full of those kinds of judgments start looking out for them okay because um, here's the kicker right the choice you need to make is am I willing to be judged as that in order to have what I want and that is often the true gap okay between like where you are and where you want to be and then being willing to be judged as arrogant as full of yourself as um too big for your boots right but you in allowing yourself to show up get to feel the joy of full self-expression and that's what's mesmerizing that's what attracts real ideal clients not the ones we make up in our head right or you know in that business um process of um you know demographic psychographics yes all of that is important but it has to if it if it if you want it to feel good if you want to feel joy when you show up at work with your clients then it needs to have come first from your unapologetic self-expression and seeing who that attracts knowing those people are your real ideal clients and there's likely to be in the journey of daring to show up as your true self fears of being seen as like the things in this bucket right too big for your boots um yes arrogant full of yourself um a know-it-all um all of those kinds of judgments of yourself right like i don't want to be seen as that and so just check in with yourself are you judging other people as that are you making assumptions and judgments around other people and if you are and if you want to experience more inner freedom in terms of your self-expression I would suggest questioning those judgments of other people and question and asking yourself how else might I respond if I see someone celebrating and I feel like uh, how come how come they are successful and I'm not practice celebrating them right if it's on social media comment underneath oh my goodness that's so inspiring right practice 
responding differently to other people who are shining. And just see what that does to your own inner landscape and your fears of being judged. So I'm going to pause there. Oh, Stephanie, you can feel how sadness is showing up inside you and how you're trying to fight it back. And what if you didn't? Yeah, what if you just let yourself feel sad? Knowing that in this moment, that is your true self-expression. True self-expression doesn't always look shiny. Sometimes it looks real messy and blubbly and snorty. And we can't really have one without the other. So please know that if we were together, I'd be saying and letting you know that your, your sadness, your tears, if they come, are so welcome. So, so welcome. And see if you can find that place inside you that welcomes them. That lets them be okay. Because they are. Because you are. Because all of who you are is okay. <laughs> Emily says, I know your words are landing because I've got a part showing up who's feeling, yuck, I don't want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, I know that one. Um, and then I know it's something I want to be moving towards. Exactly, exactly. We wouldn't have such a visceral response. <gasps> oh my God. If we didn't, if a part of us didn't want to do it. So beautiful. Okay. Ooh, that's a good question, Nicola. I'm going to come to that. Um, absolutely, Emily, bringing lots of compassion, even when it's the voice that says, I don't want to do this anymore. And this is the, the depth of it, right? This is the depth of self-expression is, you know, as Stephanie, as you, as you shared, Emily, as you shared, is can I allow all of it? Can I allow the sadness? Can I allow the selfishness, right? Can I allow the part of me that wants it to be different? Can I even allow that part, right? And let the part that wants it to be different also be okay right now. Can I be with all of it? Self-expression doesn't mean always showing up fully and bright, right? Self-expression means being in the moment, being who you are in that moment, all of you. So Nicola's question, what if it's certain people on our friends list that are triggering our fear, should we remove them? or share anyway? That's a very interesting question. I would say it depends where you're at in your journey. If you're at a place where the idea of showing up more fully is um, new and like terrifying, then yeah, do whatever you need to do to feel safe. And you can do that on Facebook. You can put show to everyone except D, d, and d. Well, that's what you need to do, do it. Like, give yourself radical permission to do whatever you need to do or, or you know, block them for a month, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you've got to a place in your self-expression where you're feeling really free, you know in your intimate relationships, you're fully yourself, in your work with your clients, you're fully yourself, and actually you're thinking, oh, I could, I could kind of like stretch here, 
I can stretch, I can stretch the, the boundaries and I'm going to play with this. And I'm going to say this thing, even though I know that that person might disagree and might disagree loudly. And I'm going to give that to myself as a deliberate exercise in staying true to myself, no matter what. So it always depends on you. Right? That's why blanket business advice is, you know, it's a tricky, it's a tricky, right? Because it depends on you, your inner workings, where you're at on your journey, what your desires are. And so my, um, my suggestion, and this is, I recommend what you always have as your first next step. And also I'll let this be our, by be the way we close today, is that in those moments where you're not sure, right? Like, oh, do, do I share? Do I not? Do I block that person? Do I not? Have your first next step be taking a pause, taking a breath. That's how we soothe our nervous system, right? Through this beautiful gift of the out breath. Ah. Let it come out, have a little vocal, vocal sigh. Notice as you do that. Ah. Your body softens, right? The fear thoughts recede a little. As you come into your parasympathetic nervous system, right? You come out of the sympathetic system, out of fight or flight or freeze or fawn. Ah, okay, I'm safe. Right now in this moment, I'm safe. And then make your choice your decision from that place. Now, don't make decisions from fear. Like, oh, that person's triggering my fear and I'm afraid. Do I, what do I do? Like, mm -mm. pause. Ah, soften. Take as long as it takes to come back into feeling in your body, right? Back to physical touch in your body. Hugs, squeezes. If it feels right to check in with your little one, what do you need? Yeah, and then, okay, as my fully adult self, what do I choose? How do I wanna move forward? All right, so there is your mesmerizing messaging session for today, all about fear and judgment. Ah, okay, thank you so much for being here with me live. If you are watching the replay, please do um, like, love, comment, let me know your thoughts and your questions. And if you know anyone you think would benefit from hearing these mesmerizing messaging lives, please do invite them into this group. Don't send them the link because that's a little bit spammy. Just send them a private message. Maybe if you've got a business buddy, and that you'd like to be in here with you um, on the ride and just say, hey, I'm part of this group. There are weekly mesmerizing messaging sessions. Um, maybe put a little bit about what you're, how you're benefiting and then ask your friend, would you like the link? And then if they say yes, send them the, the URL to, to our group, to Highly Sensitive, Wildly Successful. So I'll be showing up here again, same time next week. And then the following week, so starting on Monday the 8th, I'm going to be doing a five day free training all about crafting your mesmerizing message. Okay, so make sure you've got that in the diary. It's going to be at midday every single day from Monday to Friday, starting on Monday the 8th of February. Really, really excited to share that training with you. It's brand new very exciting and for now I'm sending you all of you lots and lots of love bye for now